So in my previous video, I had set up some prerequisites that were required to migrate my machine. Now let's upload this over file into my vCenter. Click on the host that I'm going to upload my file to. Select deploy OVF template. Locate the file where you have downloaded the file. Click on next. Click on the data center that you would like to deploy your OVA in and click on next. Now I've noticed that my machine over here fails to deploy from the vCenter. And if this happens for you as well, you can go directly into the host and upload the OVA file from the host. I just want to show you that you might receive an error. And if you do, please use the host to upload your OVA file. Fail to deploy OVF package. So this happens when I use the vCenter client to deploy my OVA package. So I'll let me go into my ESXi host. And over here, let's create a VM. Let's deploy an OVA file. Click on the OVA file. Copy the name, drag and drop. And click next. Let's deploy it in my only one data store. Then choose VM network, which is fine. Click on next and click on finish. I will wait for my OVA file to be uploaded and pause this video and come back to you once it's done. So my VM is now uploaded and if I power on this VM, I am getting a monitor loop power failed. I believe this is because my resources are not a lot on my test environment. So let me go and edit the settings of my Azure migration machine. Let me reduce this to 16 and let me leave the hard disk as is and let's try. It's reconfigured. So let's power it on again. Okay, great. So my machine has powered on because initially it was not powering on because I had limited resources in my lab environment. So in case you face a monitor loop, please reduce your resources. Let's open up a console. Always trust the certificate. So since this is the first time that the machine is starting, it will take a while to boot up. I'll get back to you once the machine has booted up successfully. My machine has now booted up. So let's click on accept. I will put in an administrator password for this machine and click finish. Let's log into my machine. I just want to get the IP address of this machine so that I can remote into this machine. 111.151. I will open my remote desktop client, a third party client, and I will change the configuration to 151. Let me try and connect to this machine. I've connected to this machine so it's easier for you all to follow along because this was too small for me as well. So let me close my V remote. Let me close this as well. And the Azure Migrate Appliance OVA automatically opens an Edge browser with the configurations that we need to perform to move our machine. So let's agree to the terms of use. These are some prerequisites that Azure needs for it to migrate the machine. So it's checking my connectivity currently to Azure, which is good. Time sync with Azure is good. And now I need to put in my project key. This key I will get from the portal. Let me minimize my virtual machine. Go into my portal. And let's 
give it a name, Azure Migration. And generate key. This might take a minute or so. Let's copy my project key, paste it over here, and verify my project key. Project key has been verified. Now it's doing an appliance auto update status. This might take up to five minutes. So the appliance auto update status check has been successfully passed. Let's log into Azure. So I've successfully signed into my Azure account. It's saying initiating appliance registration. This could take up to 10 minutes to complete. So I shall pause this video and get back to you once it's done. The appliance has been successfully registered. Now we need to download the VM virtual disk development kit from the VMware website. So if we click on download, you will open a new link from which you will download the development kit. Once your development kit has been downloaded, you would need to copy the contents into program files, VMware and virtual development kit. So I have extracted the files. Let's copy all of these files. Let's go into the program files. VMware development kit and paste the contents here. Let's verify this and that has been completed. Now let's connect to our virtual center. So let's give it a friendly name. Let's say virtual center. Administrator at the here dot local and pass click on save let's add a discovery source so over here i would put in the ip address of my virtual center connect on port 443 click save and it is validating my virtual center server credentials Validation is successful. Let's scroll down. I will disable this for the time being because I don't want to perform a software in inventory on my VM currently. So let's disable this and let's click on start discovery. Now it has started the initial discovery process, which will discover all the VMs that are running on my virtual center and then show them on the Azure portal. I will get back to you once this is completed.